Hello everyone, it's Douglas from Other Than Intended Purpose, Jack's behind the camera, and contrary to popular belief, I do still exist. Uh, the last five months or so, between the weather and my health, it seems like whichever one is doing good, the other one was saying no. Today we were ready to go out to the park. And just as we were starting to get ready, it started raining. <laughs> Not a good thing when you use an electric wheelchair and it's a couple of miles to the park. Okay, so that aside, back to a, a video. It has been a long time since I have talked about the knife that I carry on a daily basis. And the thing is, is for the first time in over 10 years, that's changed. For 10 years, I carried my Hammond Cruiser and I really do like this knife. I stopped carrying it because it is getting a little bit old so the action's getting a little worn. I have actually sharpened it to the point where I'm starting to notice differences in the blade size even though I prefer to strop over actual sharpen. But yeah, see like right there it's it's there you go. I could probably take it apart and clean that up, but and I probably will at some point, but taking it apart to clean it, that's actually what made me decide to change what my daily carry is. I now carry, for the last four months, the CRKT Rakiri. And yes, I am using a cheat note because I'm brain damaged and can't remember things. The CRKT Rakiri, it has a 3.76 inch blade. That's, a good, that's, that's some blade on it. It's a fine edge, of course. It, the blade thickness is 0.13 of an inch. Overall, it is 8.94 inches. Closed. Eh, it never was dropped shut. Closed. 5.11 inches, it weighs 5 ounces, and the scales are aluminum. And the scales have some really interesting milling on them that just kind of makes it look cool. Now, I said take it apart and clean it. That's the reason that this became important. But before I do that, Jack, you want to point the, the camera right here? Did you pause it before you moved it? I didn't. Before I get into... Oh, sorry about the little earthquake there. Jack was slower on the pause than he was on the move. For size reference... Oh, I love it when they start not working as great. Pivot to pivot. It's very similar in size to the... the Hammond Cruiser that I carried for so long. It's in a series called, uh, or a series that has, um, god dang, I hate my brain, field strip technology. There we go. I have two other field strip knives. This one is the home front, and it's a little bit smaller blade. You can do a, a pivot to pivot overlay. It's really close, but it just... Um, I like this one better. My other one that is a field strip does not have a flipper, which is the main reason it doesn't get carried every day. Laying it over, you can see it's very similar blade size. Very nice handle scales. The reason, one of the reasons that this is not talked about very often is because the people at CRKT, along with most knife makers really like tongue twister names this is the mana she yeah and just for size comparison again does not have a flipper so I have to two hand open it is the BK40 So as you can see, the ones that I carry in my pocket the most are, are the big ones. And I like the ability to do things that take a bigger knife. I, it's just 
the way I like to do. But this knife in particular has a really cool technology that a lot of people haven't seen yet. You've got this flipper tab. You flip that up like that. You got this little wheel. You roll it until it clicks. There. It's stripped for cleaning. Now because of this they can't run ball bearings but it does have nylon bushings which which makes it pretty nice. I will use my Jack Wolf knives cloth but really I mean it's clean right now so I don't need any chemicals on it or anything to clean it. I, I try to keep things pretty clean when I'm carrying them around. But you wipe off the pivot clean the blade down a little bit make sure you get in between the stop pin and the pivot and you can see the uh, liner lo up there you can see the liner lock right there that, that's all that does reassembling it you want to make sure you don't cut yourself because that is a very sharp blade. You get the stop pin inside the track and that will stop it from hitting this and then when it is open it stops it from going any farther and then you see the lock up pops out on it right there. take your top scale you gotta put that pin in that hole which never cooperates on camera there's a pin down here that you have to line up and then you crank this up it will suck that in and when you get that fully cranked down holding this that goes back over and we have a functioning knife again not needing any tools and only having three parts to put back together makes it so that this is really good for carrying around places now if I do something to it that gets it dirty I can get all the way inside to the pivot and clean that down it's ready to go. Okay, pause and go back. A transition without an earthquake. Here you go. <laughs> I realized why I was having trouble reading the card and reading the name on that is because I forgot to put my glasses back on when I took them off to wipe them down before we did this. <clears throat> now, I had wanted to do some wood cutting and things like that with this just to show its abilities but it was raining and I couldn't go out in the rain but I do want to say that after carrying this whoops after carrying this for four months using the hell out of it why is this not cutting good it was it I need to strop it but it is still really sharp now the steel on this is one point two one one four or something like that and I had no idea what that steel was because I had never heard of it before now talking in a couple of the knife forums people said that it is the equivalent of D2 um, one person said that it was like A1 either one of those would have been fine I talked to a friend of mine that's a machinist and he said that in machining that steel is about halfway between A1 and D2 for hardness, toughness, and machinability. So it's not a bad uh, piece of steel. I mean, it, it's better than 8CR, which seems to be a popular one for a lot of companies right now. Although 8CR is not that bad. Um, I believe the Monashi is, is 8CR. 
isn't it? Um, doesn't say. I love when they don't put steel on the thing. But I've I've used HCR knives before. They they aren't nearly as bad as some people try to make them out to be. Just like anything else, there's going to be snobs. It's like, oh, well, I want a crucible steel. It's like they ha they have to powder the the elements and bring them together in a in a uh, forge in a crucible, or or it's not steel. Well, I only have a couple of crucible steel blades, and I can tell you that I don't really see that they cut differently. When you apply the sharp bit to the thing you want to split cut, they, it cuts. So that that's my thing about knives is I want them to be able to do their job. Knives are tools to me. I don't have safe cleans. I don't do, um, well, this one's pretty and has fancier metals on it, so it's automatically better. But we're getting into a rant. I don't want to get into a rant. I do want to say that in the time that I have been down, we have picked up quite a few new subscribers. We lost a few, but we 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 are now approaching 225 or 225. Is that right? Yeah, 225. And when we get to 250, we have something special planned. So, to the new subscribers thank you for joining us to the old subscribers thank you for not leaving us we're going to try this summer to put out videos on a more regular basis um, so that's that get out in the woods enjoy yourself whatever equipment you plan to take to the woods Train with it, practice with it, know how it reacts. Because not every saw or not every axe or not every tarp is going to react the same way to the same things. You have to know your equipment. 222. Oh, Jack just looked it up. We're at 222 subscriptions. So that's amazing. Especially being that the weather and my health have kept me from, from being able to. Jack's willing and ready. He's good to go. He's 24. He'll be 25 in a couple of weeks. He's he's, yeah. You will. Yeah. Don't give me right that. about a week and a. Half Don't give me so. that look. It'll be a week and a half, or so. You'll be 25 years old. Why do you think That's I have weird. so much gray hair? <laughs> Jack is a great guy, though. He really is. I do. Before we go, want to do one more quick thing. If I can get my table out of the way. Since the last time you guys have, or the last time I've talked to you guys, something really cool has happened. Modi, come here. Come here. Modi, come here. We've added Modi to the group. And he's such a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's a licker. <laughs> so this is my my new friend Modi. And he stays here with me all the time. But I think I woke him up so he's not really in the mood to be personable. But he's a really good boy. Uh, Modi is the name of the uh, patron god of the berserkers for... Germanic tribes in the eighth century. I think it was uh, son of Thor and someone else. Yes, but he was he was the patron god of berserkers, and my family descends from the Prussian berserkers, so he's he's my patron. All right, enough silliness. You guys have a really good night. Get out in the woods. Enjoy yourself. Nature is your friend. Bye. Hug a dog. <laughs>